Well, good morning and welcome back to Central Ontario. A little cold today, but as you can see, nice, clear, bright sky, so it'll be nice to be outside. Pretty excited today. I think we found a solution to that little spreader issue I had on the last video. I'll post that here. We're going to get together. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on with the spreader and how it works. And then we're going to head over to Guy's because the guy thinks he has a solution. And knowing Guy, he does have a solution. Anyways, I hope you have a few minutes. Grab a coffee and stick around. Should be interesting. Cheers. So you folks, if you follow the channel, you know that this is the first winter I've had this broadcast spreader and it's been working great up until the last video. And I think I've used it five or six times. I put sand in it, fire it up, engage the PTO. I open the gates. It takes about 30, 40, 50 seconds and the sand starts to sputter out and then it starts coming out consistently. And then I do the driveway. On the last video, for the first time, for some reason the sand wasn't coming out consistently and I had to keep shaking the tub by bouncing my three-point hitch up and down, which I'm not so sure is good for the tractor. Either way, Guy took a look at it. I think we know what the problem is, and I think we have a fix for it today. So let me take a look at the tub, and let me show you a few things. So hopefully you folks can see this. We're inside the tub. I'll try to zoom in as best I can. But basically, the agitator down here are these two sticks, or these two pieces of metal that are bent that spin around when the PTO is engaged and that's usually what carves the sand out. You'll notice there's a big hub here in the middle and I'll explain that in a second. Here's the opening of your two gates to allow your material to, to release and as you know on this model I can open one or two gates uh, at my choice either right or left or both of them. The broadcast spreader comes with this large additional agitator and what it's for is for using light materials only. It simply attaches to this hub, there's a bolt that goes in and when you engage the PTO it spins around the circumference of the tub and so long as you have light materials according to the manual, you have no problem you should be using this. What it does tell you is that if you're using sand or salt or any type of a material that's heavy, they say you have to take this off because otherwise it'll create a lot of resistance on the gearbox and the PTO and I assume it'll snap the shear pin on the PTO. So we can't use this with sand. The next important piece of information is that your two gates are here. And so what was happening last week when I kept shaking the tub is I had Guy take a look at it for me. And when you open up these gates, and as you can see, these gates can fully close or open up pretty wide. And as I said, you can open either gate at the time, so it fully closes. What Guy did is he took a look up there and also put a stick. And what he said is he could see is that the sand was domed almost with a center that was totally empty right on the inside of that, that tub. And so what it appeared to him is that the agitator that's in there was missing the sand because the sand was kind of domed over and it wasn't falling back into the middle like I guess it had been the rest of the winter. So a couple other things that I think are pertinent to the story today and perhaps to the mystery. All of the times I used that sander this winter, it was off the same pile of sand which I picked up last November before the winter. And probably like yourselves, before the winter comes, you head over to the works department, you grab a half a truckload of sand, you bring it in, you get her set because you know you're going to need it for the next few months. So as you probably saw in that video, I had actually gone to the works department for the first time and that was a new batch of sand. The rest of the, the winter I was using off of the initial batch of sand. I also want to show you how I store my sand. I pick up the sand from the works depot, I grab a tarp, a cheap one, I pick up at Princess Auto. I don't spend a lot of money on these because they're kind of disposable. I lay it out on the ground, I pile the sand in it, and then I fold it over. And then I put wood or something on top because that way it kind of helps to protect it from moisture underneath and water and it also helps to keep it covered from moisture, rain, snow, etc. The other thing I learned this week, because I figured I'd do my investigation, is it turns out that there is actually salt in the sand I've been using all these years. I was told previously by the municipality that there was no salt in it, it was just sand. Um, but I wanted to just check it, so I made two calls this week. First I called the administration office, great people by the way, and then I also found the phone number for the guy that runs the roads department here in the municipality. The person in the admin office told me there was no salt in it. I said, okay, thanks very much. But fortunately, the gentleman that runs the road department called me a few hours later and returned that call. I asked him the same question, and he said, in fact, they do put a little bit of salt in the sand because he said it stops it from freezing in the winter, which is what a lot of you folks had told me several videos ago is that you were pretty sure there was salt in there. So that's how I store my sand, and that's how I've always stored it, and it seems to work fine, especially now knowing there's a little bit of salt in there. That explains a lot. I've got my measurements. I'm going to head over to Guy's place and we're going to see what little mod he's built or that he's putting together for me that he says should solve the problem. Because at the end of the day, 
Wet sand or dry sand, I need that broadcast spreader to work when I need it to work one way or another, whether the sand's wet or not. So we'll see what Guy's got cooking. And as you know, Guy, if he's got something cooking, it usually works. So all it is basically is a bolt that's a little bit shorter than the diameter of the inside of that tub. We're just going to put it through. It's got two washers, two bolts on either side so we can lock it, as well as a lock washer and a little bit of Loctite. So we're going to throw it on there, throw some sand in it. We're going to test it out and see if that solves the problem and breaks down that cone effect that's occurring with the wet sand. Stick around. Okay, so the first mod that we did was my idea. Uh, just a quick, simple bolt in there. I thought it'd be enough to spin it, as you guys know, and it did not work. So I came back and uh, sought some help from uh, the wise man down the street. He's put together a little prototype for us. So as you probably saw, took a piece of PVC piping, took a torch, warmed up the end of it so it was malleable, stuck it down on top of the nub that's sticking out or the hop out on the top of the uh, uh, agitator and was able to get it to mold to it through a bolt in there. And then instead of using some form of welded metal, we're gonna try using chain. So we're gonna see how this works, just a prototype. If it does work, then we've got a prototype that we can build something that's a little more stronger and something that'll last. Stick around. Okay, so we tested it out with the chain at the top. Still wasn't letting it come out, as you guys could see. And what we, when we look back up into the gates, we could see the cone is very close to the very bottom. So what Guy's done is we've drilled another hole closer, put another set of chains, and we're gonna test this out. Stick around. Cheers. Thank you very much, Guy. That turned into quite an experiment, eh? It was interesting. Yeah, it yeah. works much better now. And I know, uh, I guess I've learned a little bit about wet sand now and moisture in the sand. <laughs> we both have. <laughs> well, yeah, because I, I got the sand from the same places, you know, same place you get yours. And I guess it was really dry the first time because the first four or five times I used it, it came out just fine. Give it a little shake at the beginning and it just keep going. But uh, I guess when we go back through it, just putting that one bolt in, which I thought would be you know, more than enough. Oh, I thought so too, because the little cone was at the bottom. Right. Clear that and everything will fall through. No, yeah, so... <laughs> Let's uh, keep moving up. I, well, first of all, I thought that was a brilliant idea, using that pipe and molding it in, and then putting the chain at the top, because I thought that would drop everything down. 
but then uh, not so much. That's what I assume. I thought it would drop the sand, draw the sand into the center, and it would drop down. Right. But it was it built up halfway down again. Mm -hmm. So hence the, that second piece of chain. Yeah. Now we've got sort of a coke bottle shape in there, but it's getting the sand down as strong. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to see the bridging. I guess you call it the way it bridges around those chains, but it's still enough that it's knocking it down. And what I like about the design too is I've got the gates open, but as you know, on the last many times I've used it, sometimes I'm shooting out way too much sand. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's got a constant trickle, because I was watching it come out of the gate as I'm driving, and it's just constantly trickling down, and it's giving me a nice light spread on top of the, the ground, which I think well, is pretty good. We're on the right track anyway, that's for sure. Yeah, and you said you wanted to try some other design. I'm trying, rather than having the, the chains come straight out, yeah. because we get that Coke bottle effect. Right. If we have a chain that'll bolt to the top, loop down, bolt at the bottom, so it'll be a big swing. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, well, once I get through that bucket, because it seems to be working well, I'd love to just try that loop chain, like you said, see if that does it better. Yeah. But at least, if nothing else, if I've got wet sand now, I've got a solution. And if it works well, then maybe we can do something more permanent uh, than the prototype. Well, I think uh, I really appreciate your time today. Thank, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Interesting challenge. Well, now I can get the big hill done so you don't have to chain me and drag me out anymore. <laughs> I'm going to lose. I'm going to miss all the fun, aren't I? <laughs> I think so. Well, listen, thanks so much, everybody, for sticking around. I hope it was enjoyable or, if nothing else, informative. Uh, it's funny. It turned into a bit of an experiment, but it's uh, we've learned a little bit today about sand and using that spreader, and hopefully it's something that you guys can use at home if you need it. Thanks for sticking around. If you like the channel, please click subscribe. Hit the like button. <laughs> And if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful week with your families, and we'll see you again on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.